Hi, welcome back. We're going to do the walkthrough for TED 2. For this walkthrough, you will need your notes with all of your circle vocabulary. And so here's all my circle vocabulary notes. You'll also need uh, some information on arc measure and on arc length. Both of those previous videos, uh, I'll put a link in the description for you. Here we go. Let's take a look at the first page. Again, I'm using a large font version of the um, worksheet that you have in your possession. Um, so things look like they're in slightly different places, but that's only because my font is bigger. And that's so that it shows up on camera a little bit better for you. Okay, so let's look at the first section. The first section tells you that you've got some circle here. Circle center is Q. That's told to me by the name, circle Q. Um, it also gives me some diameters, line segment AC and BB. So these segments right here are diameters, not just because they look like diameters, but because the directions actually tell us these things are diameters. They want us to identify each arc um, below. Looks like we've got six of them, whether it's a major arc, a minor arc, or a semicircle, and then to use that information in order to find its measure. Uh, we're going to take a moment to remind you of what these things are. The first one is a semicircle. So here's our reminder vocabulary. This was uh, the vocabulary uh, match game that I had you put together. So here's semicircle. And when you match that, its definition is the arc of a circle whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. So this arc going from A through E and D the C would be a semicircle. Also, this arc starting at C, going through point B, up again to A, that would also be a semicircle. Minor and major arcs are um, talked about in reference to the semicircle, a minor arc being the arc of a circle whose length is less than a semicircle, and a major arc being the arc of a circle whose length is greater than the semicircle. Remember that with um, the measures of arc, since we want to find its measure, not its length, the measure is the same as the central angle that created the arc. So if we were looking at the arc from A through E and D and down to C, since that's a semicircle, our note stated that the measure of a semicircle is 180 degrees because this angle A Q C central angle that creates that arc is a straight angle and all straight angles have a measure of 180 degrees we're also missing some angle measures in here so I suggest you take a moment to figure out what these missing angle measures are we can, use, we can do that using the sum of central angles, which stated that all the angles in a circle add up to 100, I'm sorry, to 360 degrees. I'm going to move the circle over a little bit so I have room to place some lined paper. So I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> Tell you what, this is getting a little, um, little kind of big here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sketch it out a little smaller so that I can zoom in a bit further. I'm going to copy this figure real quickly. A, B, C, B, Q. Right here is 100. Over here is 50. And that's no right. Okay, so let me zoom in. So here we have that circle. And we're trying to find the measures of these here, this one here, and this one here. Now, according to the sum of central angles, you can state that all of these added together give you 360, but I have three unknowns. But here's something that we know. Take a look right here. We have this diameter here and this semicircle here. Remember that a semicircle, or that a diameter, this angle here, has a central angle measure of 180. It means that this angle here, A, 
QB, one of the ones that we don't know, plus the measure of this angle here, B, excuse me, BQC, need to equal the straight angle of 180 degrees. I don't know what the measure of this angle here, AQ, is. I'm still confused, but I know that the measure of BQC is 100. And so with some really quick algebra, I can show that the angle measure of that angle that I wasn't sure about, AQB, is 80. All right, so I have some information. You can now look at this diameter if you wanted and this resulting semicircle to do the same sort of thing to help you find the measure of this angle right in here. So go ahead and use that same technique to do the same thing. Likewise, using again this diameter, we can then trace out this semicircle and do something very similar to figure out the measure of that angle. If you don't want to go through that, you can uh, notice that we've got some vertical angles happening there. That could also help you out in that. Go ahead and take a few moments to make sure that that gets done. All right, so looking back at our worksheet here, this is assuming you've already found the measures of all of those angles. We've already talked about how you figure out what's a major arc or a minor arc. So you shouldn't have too much trouble then identifying whether these are major, minor, or semicircle arcs. And then from there, using the measures of their central angles in order to say what the measure of each of those arcs. Let's move on to the next page, to the next section rather. In this section, again, you're given a circle, center P. You're told that there's uh, some diameters happening, in this case, segment FH and segment ED, and you're being asked to find each measure. It looks like these are measures of arc. So same sort of process you get to see in a different format, and there's a lot more angles that you have to deal with. Let's move on to the next section. The next section says that we need to use circle Z, that we've got that printed there, to find the arc length. Notice this is different now than what we had before. Before we were being asked to find the arc measure. Essentially, just find the measure of the central angle that's creating the arc. Now, we're not asking for the measure of the arc. We want to know what the length is. So let's go back to our notes and let's find the measure, uh, or excuse me, the formula for arc length in our notes. Now my notes here, opening to my circle section, there's my notes on arc length and there's my formula written as a proportion. Arc length divided by circumference, equals measure of central angle that creates the arc divided by 360. That is going to be the formula that is going to get used on this particular section. So since I know I'm going to be using that formula, let's go ahead and start it off with that formula. So grabbing my Sharpie pens here, here's my formula. Arc length over circumference equals central angle measure that creates that arc over 306. I'm going to zoom in a little bit tighter so that you can see. All right, the arc length is the thing I'm trying to find, so he's going to stay as the variable. Um, I guess let's write him in because that's, that's what I'm trying to find. Right, so arc length divided by circumference. So I need to find the circumference of the circle. That's given by 2 times the pi times the radius. What is the radius of this circle? I'm going to look at the, the directions here. The question, it says that we want to try to find the arc length 
QPT, so this arc length right here, this minor arc, and it says if QZ, QZ is 10 inches. Oh look, QZ is a radius, so I'm going to fill in the information on radius. And now I need to find theta, theta being the measure of the central angle that is creating arc in question. Now, if I take a look at the arc in question, this QPT, and I look at what central angle is creating it, QZT, I notice that part of it right here, QZP is 90. But I'm missing information on the measure of PT, the other part of the angle that is creating the arc that I want information on. Using the same setup that you use sections, notice here that you have a diameter TR, and you can use that idea here, measure of this straight angle 180, to figure out the measure of this missing angle. Right. You have enough information that I believe that you can continue on. I will put a link in the, the description on where you can go to figure out how you would calculate this arc length in the information. You've already seen how to calculate this theta, so you have all the information that you need. Let's look at the next section. Got uh, several of these. There we go. The last section is this intimidating looking word problem. Let's read through it really quick to make sure there's no questions. It says homework. Refer to the table, which shows the number of hours students at Leland High School say they spend on homework each night. And here's our table. 8% say they spend less than an hour. 29% say they spend between 1 and 2 hours. 58 say they spend between 2 and 3. 3% say they spend... Four and two percent say that they spend over four hours of uh, time on their homework every night. Now that we kind of have an idea of what it is this is being asked for, we're we're told if we were to construct a circle graph of the data, how many degrees would be allotted in each category? Well, we need to know what a circle graph is. A circle graph is little more than what we would call a pie graph. That is, it's a circle, and we've got different sections that make this thing look like it's a pie that's been cut into a bunch of unequal slices to be shared. Um, probably this is for a child, and this piece is for me because I like a lot of cake, and that's really big. That bit of that one is what I'd give to my daughter. And then she'd complain that I was being unfair and I was eating too much cake. And so she'd force me to get one of these pieces. But this is a pie chart. It's also called a circle graph. Now, this percentage is the percentage of the entire circumference of the circle, rather, the entire rotation of the circle. Since I'm being asked how many degrees would be allotted to each category, let's look at the first category. The first category says that they spend less than one hour. 8% of the student population said that. And a little bit better because I'm realizing that's getting. There we go. Well, we want 8% of the total rotation of a circle, which is 360 degrees. In math, when we're talking about word problems and we say of, we usually mean multiplication and so this problem can be rewritten as 8% multiplied by 300. Let's convert this 8% into a decimal to make things stick into a calculator. 8% as a decimal is going to be 0 0.08. So 0 0.08 times 360 will give us the number of degrees that 8% is of 360. You'll use the same sort of technique 
in order to figure out uh, degrees for each of your categories. And please make sure that you show that work that you're calculating at um, that percent. The second half of this question asks you to describe the arcs that are associated with each category. This means that we want to know, is this a minor arc, a major arc, or a semicircle? Um, so please take a moment to, I would recommend that you sketch it out just so that you can take a look, or you can use the number of degrees. Remembering that a minor arc is going to be anything that is less than 180, and a major arc is going to be anything that is greater than 180 with the semicircle being right exactly at the 180 degrees. That concludes our walkthrough. This was worksheet 10-2. I hope that that was helpful to you, and we'll see you in class. Bye.